Alright, time for another cycling vlog. Hopefully you can hear me. Cycling with David. Say hi, David. Oh, he's turning past me. Subscribe to the Global G's. Yes. Subscribe to Global G's and also to my channels. And, whoa. I mean, it's not the only reason I ride with David, but he uh, agreed to wear two of my watches so we could collect a crap load of data today. So on his left is the Garmin Instinct Solar. And then on his right is the Apple Watch 6. My left is the Samsung Galaxy Watch 4. My cyclometer today, Garmin Phoenix 6X Pro Solar. On my right ankle is the Halo Band. Let's see if I can go handless. All right, there we go. On my right, the Casio GBD H1000 G-Shock Polar Verity, which is feeding data to my Phoenix. Left, turning left. We have the mountains to our right. Awesome. Wow. If you're gonna be a vlogger, you gotta learn to ride your bike without your hands. Right, David? Yeah. I've been working on it for years. Now we have widescreen, and yeah. So we have one, two, three, four, five gadgets on me, two on David, and that should be enough. I have my phone in my pocket. What? Phone in my oh yeah, he has his iPhone, and I have my iPhone. Right now we're riding through Mapleton, and I'm about to get hit by a car. Hang on. So one of the reasons I wear so many watches is I don't get out and cycle. Not as much as we should, right, David? Anyway, so I like to just collect as a bunch of data as fast as I can. Uh, let me show you my cyclometer. I like doing this because I can just quickly glance down, see my heart rate, elevation, respiration, which is new. There must have been an update with Polar because my respiration, my respiration rate was not on there before. And now it is. And then as far as the heart rate, instant from the Polar. And then all the other devices, Samsung and the Casio, take a little bit to update. So that's saying 142, oh, 142, 141. Which way, right or left? Right? All right. Am I going the right way? Oh, wrong turn. Okay. Scenic view of the mountains. Are you sure you don't want to go this way? All right. Let's see. 142. 144. Let's check Samsung. Huh. And check my watch strap. Huh. No heart rate. I don't know what's going on. And this is why we cycle. Look at those views, David. Let me see if iPhone let me zoom in on the colors. So right now it is almost October. Today is September 29th. We have the leaves, all the foliage changing color. Gorgeous day for cycling. And yet Samsung still is not telling me my heart rate. Well, good thing I have three other devices. Actually, four. Come on, Trek. Climb those mountains. How you feeling there, uh, David? Good. If you want to swear in Russian, go ahead. Wait. I won't blame you. <laughs> See, that doesn't even phase me. You can swear in Russian all you want, and I'll swear in Italian. So a fun swear word in Italian would be pedbaco, which is pretty much saying the... Latin wine god in vain, Bacchus. Or you can say pig misery, porca miseria. That's a good one. So if you're wondering if your bike needs a tune-up, listen to David's bike. If you can't find it, grind it. Come on, David, grind it. Altitude, almost 5,000. That's where we're going. Okay, there we go. Uh, I think your chain is loose too, eh? Yeah. I know I say A a lot, 
I'm not from Canada, but I had Canadian roommates in college. Ooh. Time for another vlog entry. We made it to the top of the monster. Altitude, 5,431. Heart rate was at 160 something. And now we're entering the campground. I took off my helmet. Unita, Juanita. How do you say it, Juanita? Is it Juanita Campground? Juanita National Forest. Yeah. Anyway, the campground's almost closed for the winter. Oh, here comes a dog. So that was good. That was over 500 feet of vertical climbing. And now I get a cruise around the campground again. I love coming up here. All right, so we finished the ride. David was on the Fetzati bike. I was on my trusty Trek bike here. Take a look at the stats from the Instinct Solar. We have timer, one hour, 20 minutes. Really? We were gone that long. Time of day, 14.30. Warm up, yada, 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 stop. Okay, so we have resume, which is really nice. I love that option. Resume later, lap, back to start. Recover HR, discard, and save. So the vis visibility of this watch is just amazing. Right, David? Yeah. It was easier to see than the Apple Watch. Average speed, 10 miles per hour, 533 calories, not bad. Oh, really? That'll compensate for your donut. So distance, time, average speed, 10 miles, average heart rate, 122. Max heart rate, 165. Ascent, 987. Descent, just under 1,000. So pretty much 1,000 up, 1,000 down. Good job, David. Good job. Let's see how many steps we got. Solar intensity, nice. 2,608 steps. Okay, next watch. And end. Outdoor cycle, 200% complete. Total time, 1 hour 15. Total distance, just under 14. Oh! We need to ride like 0 0.02 miles more. This one says 560 calories, total calories. Average heart rate, 126. Range up to 163, pretty close. Elevate. And then if I go back to yesterday, trends. Ah, oh, here we go. Show more. And here's the cycling workout for yesterday. 13.98 miles. The, something happened, the video got cut off. It was cycling at door complete, total time, distance, elevation gain, which is really close to Garmin. Uh, honestly, I trust Garmin more on that, but Apple does record the splits as well. And then there's all the heart rate data. There's a map. Looks like we can scroll over it. Yeah, heart rate recovery. Nice. So as long as you wear your Apple Watch after your workout's done, you'll see the heart rate recovery as well. And that that's it. That's what you're gonna get for cycling. And then you can click right here and share that with your, with your friends if you want. Yeah. All right, back from the bike ride, still in my jersey, and I finally stopped sweating, so that was good. Kind of a cooler day. We went up what we've nicknamed the monster because it's this unforgiving 1,000 foot vertical climb as you saw in the footage. Let's take a look at the data. My drink of choice, a little uh, by coconut, yummy, yummy. So we looked at David's data. Now we can look at mine. Recovery HR. Oh, well, that was easy. So I recovered it. And again, getting the heart rate from the Polar Verity, which I like very much. And it pairs with this watch. It also pairs with the Instinct Solar. Uh, I'm going to find out if it pairs with this Fossil Gen 6. It does not pair with this one, doesn't pair with the Apple Watch, which is quite unfortunate. But the good news is the Apple Watch did auto-detect my workout, which was cool, and save. So 17 miles and change, pretty good ride, pretty good. 17.17, that's a great number. Scroll on down, aerobic, anaerobic, recovery, 22 hours. I'm getting in better shape. Normally that ride would have knocked me out for like two days. That's good news for my aging body. Productive, fitness load, etc., etc. Cool stuff. So there's the solar activity. There's my solar intensity. 
over the last six hours, but mostly the last hour and a half while cycling my day. So there's the bike ride, did my walk this morning, 43 intensity minutes, not too shabby, 13 flights of stairs. When you don't wear the watch on your wrist, kind of a bummer because that should be like over 80 because I climbed a thousand vertical feet. Next wearable, we have the Apple Watch. So it was, it auto detected this workout, which is really cool. I don't remember it doing that before. So I don't know if this is part of Watch OS 8 or not, but pretty good stats. Average heart rate, that was just my ride back from my friend David's house. But overall, We've uh, met the circles today, all that fun stuff. Hooray. Next, we have this one. Oh yeah, I already looked at that one. Oh yeah, Casio. So this is the Casio G-Shock from their Move series. And this is the GBD-H1000. Ah, there you can read it right there. GBD-H1000. And if we click here, we can stop the workout and save. This one takes a little bit to save. It does not save the data as fast as this Garmin or the Instinct Solar. This is almost, this is over a year old now. Well, I've had it almost a year, but the technology is over a year old. This is going on a year too. There we go, 15.61 miles. So not as accurate as Garmin. Split time, oh, that was, yeah, and then pace, and then it disappears. But if I scroll up, we have 11,000. Wow, it got a lot more steps than Garmin. VO2 max, 43. Garmin said 42. All right, well, hmm. Now, funny enough, on my workout today, the heart rate between Casio and Garmin and even Samsung, they were all really close. That was interesting. The Shamsung. Now this one had issues today. It would not detect my heart rate. And I took it off and I cleaned the sensor and then put it back on. And if you saw in the video, it was really tight on my wrist. I mean, look how tight it was. And it was not getting heart rate. But as you're cycling, you have that your heart rate and you have your speed, your distance, average pace, the normal. Then you just slide here, hit finish. So max speed, average speed, average heart rate, max heart rate, 174, nice graph. You have a different HR zones, which is good. Best lap, 19.7 miles per hour, average 10. Then it has our ride in Mapleton, that's nice. And then I think it shows laps on the app as well. And this has, instead of the circles like Apple, instead this does the heart circles. So if I swipe to the right, I reached all my goals today of steps, active time. So no intensity minutes like Garmin, but it does have the goal of getting 5,000 steps. At least for me, I have mine set to have active time of 90 minutes every day. So it's not necessarily 90 minutes of a workout, but just 90 minutes of moving. Does that, does that make sense as far as active time? So you're not, I don't have to do a 90 minute workout I just have to be moving for 90 minutes. So even doing, you know, vacuuming and, you know, going to check the mail, it all adds up. Uh, it's similar to the way Fitbit used to do it years ago. Anyway, I thought that was worth noting. And last but not least, we also had the Halo, which I was wearing in my right sock, this little thing. It racked up quite a few steps, 158 points. A little bit different how it calculates things. So points are very similar to the active minutes that we just saw on the Samsung Galaxy Watch 4. But again, this device is kind of intro. I got it for $65 last year, Amazon Halo Band. This is their Gen 1. They actually just launched a second generation one called the Halo View which I'll be reviewing soon, I hope. I got on the pre-order. So this one doesn't really show me my cycling, but it does have an afternoon activity. Shows my heart rate, active time, 121 points, so it's good. 168, heart rate's a little lower in your ankle, FYI. Moderate light activity, steps, calories burned, max heart rate, average heart rate. Talks about health benefits. 
It's a really great device, especially since it doesn't bug the heck out of you. Anyway, fun stuff, fun stuff. And it even keeps track of your battery health, 70%. Last sync, 30 minutes ago. And if I pull down, it should synchronize again. Yep, works pretty well. And it tracks your sleep. Morning activity, every meal, there, yeah. Sleep score, 59, which is funny. That's a lot lower than Garmin was. Let's see what my sleep score was on Samsung. 51. Curiouser and curiouser. So these two say 51. This one said, what was it? 80 something. These devices are doing their best. Yeah. I think, was that, was that over the top? Did I wear too many gadgets? Luckily my friend David, thumbs up David, for wearing two of the watches. And I'll send you the link to the workout from the Garmin Instinct Solar. That'll be in your mailbox later today. I, 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 I pinky promise. The Apple workout, I'll just have to send you screenshots because you can't really share that. Maybe I can, we both have iPhones. Anyway, my favorite watch out of all the ones I wore today, including the one uh, David wore for cycling, <laughs> Casio, yeah, hands down. If you're into running and you really like cycling, you can't go wrong with the Phoenix 6X, even the Phoenix 5. Even if you were to get the 5X or even go the Phoenix 4, you don't need the solar. Uh, it's, it's not a gimmick, but it doesn't charge that quickly. But the Garmin Phoenix series or even the Instinct Solar, this one you can pick up for 300. Actually, you can probably get this for 250 right now. These you can get used for four, 500. Brand new, you can even spend a thousand on these, depending on what you get. Uh, this one brand new is 350, 400. I was able to get it on sale for 300. And then I got a discount after that. So I got it for 250. For 250, an amazing watch. Right now, battery life is estimated at 26 days. This one, even after that long bike ride, it's at 82% and it's saying 17 days left. That's just awesome. Whereas these two, this one will last about 40 hours, almost two days. This one, you're lucky to get 30 to 35 hours. Uh, high usage, yeah, it's a day watch. This is a day and a half. The Casio with heart rate, about three to four days. But if you notice, let me show you. I haven't charged this for two days. And because I was outside for two hours, it topped off the battery. The solar panel on this is huge. That's the, that's the solar panel, that whole gray bezel matter. Pretty cool. And I was outside using GPS and heart rate for almost two and a half hours today. And as you can see, full battery. If it's not full, it's about 90%. So that's really good. This one and this one, I'll have to do a solar charging showdown on here. Showdown? Show, showdown and see which one has the better solar panel. It's got to be pretty close. And in, in reality, this is the Garmin response to the market. And you know what I'm talking about, right? Do you understand? So Casio has been making the G-Shock Shiri, G-Shock Shiri, Casio has been making the G-Shock Shiri, I cannot talk. Okay, Casio has been making the G-Shock series for years. This one, the Instinct has only been out, I believe this is the third year that they've had it. So this is a new line extension for Garmin. And I think they're trying to capture the market for those that really love G-Shock. If you love G-Shock, but you're stuck in the Garmin ecosystem, the Instinct uh, series is a great response to that. Uh, wonderful battery life, great smart watch. This does multiple sports. This one does running. It does do cycling. I just cycled with it, but doesn't give you all the data you need. It's pretty good. Uh, I'll do a separate video on that. Thanks to my friend David for the great workout climbing the monster today. And let me know if you have any questions 
about the watches that I reviewed today. I'll be reviewing the Casio for about another week and then I'm going to sell it. Uh, the newest watch on the block is this Fossil Gen 6. This is a Wear OS device by Fossil. And I spoke to my friend Darcy today and he agreed to test this for me because I'm out of wrists. I'm the man with two watches and two wrists. Oh, that's kind of kind of noisy. I have to get a silicone band. Sounds like maybe I need to oil it. Oh, that's and that's it. We're done. Thank you so much for watching. Appreciate your time. I know there's a lot of tech reviewers out there. Hopefully my QA insight sets me apart from the others. That and I only try to review one new device each month and then I keep on reviewing my favorites. So I'll continue to review the Apple Watch 6, the Galaxy Watch 4. I'll be reviewing the Phoenix 6X Pro the rest of this year into next year until the Phoenix 7 comes out. Uh, I did hang on to the Instinct Solar. I haven't decided if I'm going to sell it. I had a friend that wanted to buy it and I told him I'd get back to him. And the Halo View I'll be reviewing soon. This one I just got. Oh yeah, and this fun device, this wristband. This is the Polar uh, Verity HR sensor. I really like it. It's really fun. I, I have videos on this if you search my channel. If I don't have it on Peter Herget and Gadgets Anonymous, you can check The Man With Two Watches as well. And the mantra for today, don't forget to run farther to go further in life. And say hi to your neighbors too. And yes, let the credits roll for the Paramount Kid. See you in 88 hours or less. Goodbye. Hello again. So here we are in the car uh, filming a video because normally the sound is pretty good and well, it's, I mean, it's a car, right? Hopefully you can hear me. Thanks for staying till the end. I forgot to tell you the stats about the aura ring. That's gadget number eight. And I also spliced in quickly the stats from the Apple Watch because something happened with recording and it got cut off. So this is what the Aura Ring captures 
when you're cycling. And there's the app. You just click on the aura ring. It'll quickly synchronize. And then we go back to yesterday. My readiness score, my sleep score. Oh, and there it is right there. Imported from Google Fit. So if you connect your aura ring to Google Fit, that's the kind of info you'll get right there where it just says cycling. If I go to activity yesterday, nice that the app just knew that. So it shows 20,000 steps, which is normal. I believe Garmin gave me 12,000 steps yesterday. So yeah, I'm getting more steps with Aura Ring because the ring is right next to the handlebar and it gets a lot of road vibration. Anyway, that's just how it works with cycling. I don't know if Aura can fix that or not. So there's the cycling workout. And then that long workout spilled over to today because if I go to my readiness score, it's 69. I didn't get enough sleep and yeah, that's how life happens, right? So sleep bounds and, but I'll have more detailed info about the aura ring in a later video, but it doesn't really do cycling, just it imports stuff or if it missed your workout, you can just click right here at a workout and you walking and then it will give you the appropriate calories so you can meet your goal such as right here my activity goal today was 434 sorry my activity goal today was 300 calories and I burned 434 fun stuff with the aura ring I really like it I feel it was worth the $300